Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Words of Heart podcast. I am your host, Dion Sanchez, and joining me in this episode is Wendy Friesen. Thank you for joining me today, Wendy. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. It's exciting to meet you. <laughs> awesome. And there's that Wi-Fi issue I mentioned, but luckily we got that in your frozen. Um, <laughs> see what I mean? What I mentioned earlier? Um, yes, it's such a pleasure to meet you as well. And <laughs> let's get this ball rolling. If you could tell my audience a bit about yourself, that would be great. So 28 years ago, I had uh, my retail business was kind of failing because of the economy at the time. And so I didn't know what I was going to do. And I was pretty much broke. I was in debt and I owed the IRS money. Um, I saw in the newspaper in Sacramento, a little tiny ad in the classified section that said hypnotherapy school. And I thought, well, that sounds interesting. I don't know anything about that. And I called them up and she said, it starts tomorrow. And I said, oh, I don't have any money. (laughs) She said, that's okay. Come anyway, we'll work it out. So I took a course that was a lot of hours and several months long, like full days. We were in there for seven, eight hours a day. And I, I loved it. I just was fascinated. It was in alignment with everything I felt and thought and I I just loved it. And from there, I started seeing clients and I was very fortunate. This was, you know, 28 years ago, it wasn't like a zillion hypnotherapists and online marketing was very different, but I was just very fortunate to do great with people and build my um, business. And now I get to fly all over the world to help clients personally, one-on-one. And that's very fun. I just got back from Miami from a client awesome so um do you find and i've and i know hypnotherapy has been pretty pivotal during this season um do you find it your um skill set with hypnotherapy to be really um what's the word i'm looking for um very slightly demanding considering we're still in the pandemic right now Yeah, it's a little bit tougher to do sessions on Zoom or online. Like sometimes my client, if they're on Zoom, if they get a little bit too deep or I feel like they're drifting off, when I'm in person with them, I would touch their shoulder and say, stay right there in that moment, but just bring your consciousness back to what we're doing and nod your head when you're ready. So I can keep them alert and aware, but on Zoom, sometimes you just, you can't uh, get them to come back out of the trance state. They will on their own eventually, but yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's challenging. So um, do you think you can give an example or share how you do hypnotherapy? I mean, I have had a guest um, previously who explained hypnotherapy a little bit, but I'm sure there's many different approaches and techniques to it. Do you mind sharing any of your techniques with myself? Oh, for sure. Yeah. And you know, one thing for people to keep in mind is that there's a lot of opportunists out there that are giving hypnotherapy certifications that they're not qualified. They don't have years in the business. They are just teaching something they read out of a book and they don't know if it's you know, something that works or not. And they're not maybe learning from the experts. So you got to be really careful, first of all, about who you choose to be a teacher of hypnotherapy. One of the things I do is regression to cause and regression to cause means that when you're relaxed and you're lying there in your recliner with me, I ask you to find that feeling you have, for instance, we could use uh, fear of flying as an example. And one of my clients that had a horrific fear of flying, she, oh, Oh, they had, she was on a plane trip. They had to turn the plane around and land it to let her out. It was so bad. So anyway, I did regression to cause. And I said, notice this feeling you have about flying and notice where you feel it in your body. And then I asked her to go back to the very first time you felt this feeling the very first time and just go all the way back and know that you're safe, no matter what it is, it's okay to go and find that memory, just go all the way back. So you guide them back. And then she goes into a small plane and she's about um, five years old, six years old, she said, and she's flying in a small plane around Niagara Falls. (laughs) Her dad is in the plane with her. And then there's also a pilot. Her dad sits her on his lap 
and has her grab the yoke and say, okay, you're going to fly the plane. Now you're flying the plane, even though obviously the pilot is right. And it scared the crap out of her because as a little girl, she thought she really was now in charge of flying this plane. And it scared her so much. And you're flying around these huge waterfalls at Niagara Falls. So with this, I had her adult self go in and take that little girl out of there to a safe place and explain that dad was just joking around and you weren't me, you weren't supposed to be flying the plane and you're totally safe. And now you're going to go back into that plane, but you're going to have a lot of fun looking at all the pretty things and the waterfalls and everything. And this is of course a short description, but putting her back in that plane with her adult self, imagining that it's fun and adventurous and she's having a wonderful time. And I say things like you can hear your laughter and how, how giddy you are about being happy in this moment. And then there's a little more work to do in regression to cause, but basically one session, she did not have a fear of flying because she had to fly to Ireland where her boyfriend was. So she flew all the way from California to Ireland. She says, I got on the plane. No problem. We took off. I took a nap no problem. It was gone. A lifetime of fear of flying. So that's a really good example of how frustrated people are with trying to get over their problems or their fears or their addictions. And there is an easier, much easier way to do it with hypnotherapy. Awesome. So um, based on what you just um, described to me, do you think it's really fundamental to look deep within your subconscious of of your of memories and any correlation to your life that may help overcome your current fear or anxiety? Yeah, for sure. Um, And using examples that you can relate to um, is working with people who are studying, taking exams, their brain is overloaded, they're multitasking, and then all the electronic stuff. There's kind of a jumble of information that you're getting and you're studying, but are you storing it properly? Because if we're distracted, like you're studying whatever physics thing, and then you get a ding on your phone and suddenly your brain is now doing this. And now there's, you know, something else that comes up. We need to compartmentalize the information that you're studying and memorizing. So we do that by not being distracted. But the other thing I do, I've done this for a lot of students is to create um, an imaginary machine in their brain And that machine is going to take over a lot of the complex tasks in memorization and recall and ability to put that information together with some other information. And one of the times that I did this for a woman, she was trying to pass the bar exam because she'd failed it three times. And it wasn't for lack of studying, just she just didn't have things organized properly. So I made these machines in her brain, she said they look like little houses and each one has a different purpose. And her brain just totally made this series of these little houses. And so this one, she says, this one has the torts in it. So whenever you're studying about torts, make sure you open that little house, right? And it's just an image, but it performs a function. And then she had one that was about some other decisions and all these different cases. And she said, now the, the little houses are connecting to each other. They're sending a connection if they need information from this one and this one to answer a question. So anyway, she passed the bar exam and it was easy for her this time because her brain had organized all that information in there in little houses. (laughs) I love your analogy of little houses in your brain. I just find that to be an interesting way of describing how our mind works and the mechanics of it. Um, I, for one, have trouble navigating things. Like I have this podcast, obviously, in work and school, and it's just a lot to try to figure out, oh, is this red or this yellow? Do I get this yellow wire or this red wire? You know, a little spy knowledge there, but it's almost the same exact principle. It's just trying to figure out what's the right part to work on and not have it all come crashing down. (laughs) So, yeah, yeah. And, and that is why we need to lower the stress involved. Watch out for things that we're 
we're talking about that are like for failure, for instance, saying, oh my gosh, I studied, but I just can't, I just, I don't, I can't take the test. I'm going to fail. I'm just going to blow it. Well, if we create negative statements that connect with something in our life and an event that we're going to be doing, we're just going to access fear and doubt and all of the negative things that, you know, we can connect with all the past experiences of negativity or failure. So that is one thing that anybody can fix right away. And if you're, you know, your life is real busy, but maybe sometimes you say to yourself, oh my God, I'm too busy. I have too much to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. You're creating this stressful state and you're activating your brain to support that stress. And instead, what you want to do is have a state of mind that one of mine is I say, everything is going to be okay. And I say it to myself in a voice that says, everything's going to be okay. Now I just feel like this calm. And now I want to create a resourceful state, which would be, I have all the information to ace that exam. I know I do. And I'm just going to let my body remember, let my mind remember, and it's going to be easier than I imagined. Now your brain is accessing all the emotional things, the memories you've had, all the really good resourceful states about being relaxed and calm and knowing you're going to ace it. And that's what we need in order to perform at a higher level. Absolutely. And I do find that to be hard for many others during this season because this pandemic has affected us deeply and mentally and emotionally it's a lot for our own brains to um adapt to and handle in itself because we're still two years into this unfortunately yeah yeah that's a tough one and one of the things that I've been noticing from my perspective of how our brain reacts and responds to things is we're not seeing smiles. So we're not seeing acknowledgement. And if you notice how much you used to see that and how much our brain is looking for that, it's like, am I being rejected? This is just happening below your consciousness, but am I being rejected? People are not smiling at me. If I say hi, I don't even know if they're saying hi back. And it's just an interesting thing that when we don't see that, that joy and that happiness, it makes us internally become sadder. Absolutely. I think this, I mean, it's brought some positivity and reflection, but it's also brought some negativity. So it's hard to walk down the street with a smile. And also you're covered in a mask. So you don't even, you can't even interact on a human level like you would normally do. Yeah. And what it's doing to the children as well, for them not to see the smiles and the engagement in their very formative years, where they're supposed to be learning from seeing faces, because we learn a lot from seeing other faces when we're really young. Absolutely. So I want to get to the icebreaker part of this conversation. (laughs) I'm enjoying this conversation. (laughs) The icebreaker, though, is a little bit my favorite part. Um, So um, I'll start with the icebreaker question. Um, I think you'll enjoy this. It makes your brain think (laughs) a little bit. (laughs) So if you had to come up with a title or a chapter for where your life is at right now, what would it Mm. mean? And if you can explain why, that would be also great. I am, uh, let's see, how would I make the title? It could also be a chapter. It doesn't even have to be a title. <laughs> <laughs> the, it's, I know this is it's so overused, but it would be finding my bliss because I moved to Hawaii a year ago because of the pandemic. And I thought at least I'll have an environment that isn't going to be winter, dark, cold snow in uh, Colorado. And also being in quarantine, who knows for how long. So I moved here for that reason. Um, the, the word bliss is just so overused because we rarely really get to experience actual bliss. Right. And I'm looking at all the things here that just feed my soul every day. And I on Facebook, I made a list. The first one is I drive 25 miles per hour <laughs> because the roads are very people go slow. They're just little nice roads along the ocean and stuff. And I drive 25. I have two favorite trees. This one is blah, blah, blah. This tree, blah, blah, blah. When I drive by and these spots, and I have all these little places around here that when I drive by them, they have something connected to my bliss and my 
calm feeling and feeling like, oh my gosh, I can actually live my life. Cause I have a lot of friends now that we don't wear masks. Like when we go to dinner and events, because we're all vaccinated and stuff, but it's like, oh, smiles. I'm getting my bliss back. <laughs> I think that's a beautiful title considering everything that's going on right now. Um, my title or chapter for where my life is at um, currently would be a warrior for change. Um, I've undergone wow. a lot in my life. Um, just to give you a little feedback into how I sort of been affected by the pandemic. Um, I actually got diagnosed with diabetes in January, oh, really? which would make it two years. So hard to believe that. <laughs> I've been diabetic for two years and this pandemic's been going on for two years. So um, I've undergone a lot of stuff in my life health wise and mentally and emotionally and I feel like a warrior really symbolizes who I am right now and where my life is and will continue to go from this point forward wow that is beautiful I love the warrior part because that has such such good intention and a positive statement and it is that you're unstoppable that nothing is going to get in your way because you're a warrior for that yeah wow yeah, big life change to find out you have diabetes. Yes, during this virus when there was no vaccine yet <laughs> when I got this news. So that was just a big old bucket of jumbled worms trying to figure out how to adapt to this new change while also adapting to this pandemic. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I survived it. I'm back, fully vaccinated. And um, I my prayers go out to everyone who's still trying to get through this season so yeah yeah well hopefully the students at your school are also having some things that relieve the stress and that you're an inspiration to them to stay strong if you're spreading your message and helping them if you're a warrior for change you want to look at all the different ways that we can create change uh for me of course the hypnotherapy training and the experience i've had in the last 28 years has been the most phenomenal thing to have like in my face every day if I catch myself, like if I knocked over my coffee, I might say, oh man, <laughs> so clumsy. Like I wouldn't say that, but most right. people do. They have an inner voice that tells them and reinforces the negative thing you don't want. So I would, even if I caught myself saying something negative, like, oh God, it's so stupid. How did I forget that? Um, which I wouldn't, but you want to stop and take a breath and say, that isn't true. I'm really smart and I'm resourceful. And I know a lot of things. Just say something that changes so that you don't keep loading your brain up with all these negative thoughts, feelings, images, because that is a, the one most just devastating thing you do to yourself. So as a warrior of change, if you hear people saying something that's negative or putting themselves down or saying, I just, I can't get myself to prepare for that exam or whatever, say, well, maybe you want to change your wording. <laughs> <laughs> and help them to see it differently. Um, and it's such a huge thing, like with athletes that I work with, the athletes, you know, they're, they're, whatever their sport or their game is, they're doing great, but they still have this negativity that they've carried from childhood. Like one of my golfers that was, he was a, going to go pro and his issues that came up emotionally were from when he was six years old playing on little league his dad was the coach and his dad was really hard on him. He carried those emotions over to his golf game as an adult. And it would just get triggered when he was not hitting a good shot or he just blamed himself. And once we cleared that up, his game improved a lot. Awesome. So on to the next part of this little icebreaker segment is my icebreaker game. I enjoy this because it <laughs> makes my guests chuckle and laugh. So this game, let me make sure I have everything set up. Okay, I have my timer. Okay, so this game <laughs> is called Song Association. You don't have to be an avid singer. You can even be a shower singer and be good at this game. It is okay. really quite fun. So basically how the game works is I give you a word, I give you a word, and you can either sing it, rap it, shower, sing it, <laughs> however you choose to do so. Um, either it's in the title, it can be in the title, or in the lyrics, but you have to actually <laughs> sing it. That's the key. You have to actually find a way okay. to sing it. You know? um, however, 
you have 15 seconds. See, the brain, the brain needs to be on your side for this game of it. <laughs> <laughs> you have 15 seconds from the second I give you the word to either have to sing it in the lyrics or in the title. Okay. All right. Got it. <laughs> brain game a little bit. <laughs> so the first word is, let me make sure. Yep. The first word is heart. Heart. Mm-hmm. Oh, my heart is full and I love the way it feels. My heart is full of generosity. <laughs> I believe you that's an actual song. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard it. And I just made it up. I swear to you. <laughs> you made it up? Oh, that yes. doesn't count. <laughs> oh, I need to start venting this in the game. You can't make up songs. <laughs> but that's a good song that you made up. Though. Oh, so I'm supposed to do a real song? Yes. Oh, I missed out on that understanding. I So, oh, okay. So it's got to be a real song that I sing part of it. Okay. Yes, I All right. can, I can, we can start <laughs> over if you like. Okay. All right. So the first word is, <laughs> although you can already know it, so your first word I'm already thinking. I could, I could always redo heart if you want. Yeah. <laughs> the first word is heart. Art? Yes, an actual song. He's a heartbreaker dream maker love taker don't you mess around with me she's a heartbreaker i don't know the rest but that's pretty that's good a song. <laughs> that's a song that's a song i know fairly fairly well and i don't think any guests have given that song as an answer before so i find that to be awesome okay so the next one Again, you can't make up the words. I might have to come up with a new game because many guests want to make up songs. Okay. <laughs> That's not part of the game. Uh, so the next word is words. Words. Mm-hmm. Oh. Very simple. Okay, this is an old, old song. Only words and only words will. What are the what's the lyrics to break your heart today oh shoot what is that song (laughs) it's only words and words are all i have to something or other you (laughs) you wouldn't know that song it's really old from the 70s i I believe that it's a song (laughs) although it's not the answer i would have expected because many guests have given um the more than words by the band extreme as their answer Uh um so i'm surprised i'm glad you came up with a different um song (laughs) pertaining to words which in in all honesty that's basically the name of my show so it would make sense for me to add it to the game so the last one i feel like i should change the last word and make it a little difficult but i'm gonna be nice and leave it alone (laughs) So the last word, da, 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 the last word is faith. Faith? Mm-hmm. Oh, <clears throat> gotta have faith, faith, faith. Oh, gotta have faith, faith, faith. Oh, that's the rest of that. Gotta, <laughs> that's all I know. No, I believe <laughs> you. Remember. Remember. You know what that song, who is that? That's, um guy that was caught in the bathroom in a men's room sticking his thing through a hole <laughs> it was a guy that got caught for being a perv that would be george michael <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yes that is a really good song and it shows that everyone should have faith so when it comes to these troubling times so thank you for partaking in this wonderful game <laughs> I told you, you don't have to be an avid singer to understand it. And you even made up a song, which who knows, maybe we <laughs> should, maybe I should put that part of it on iTunes or something. You could be like a famous made up song singer. So Actually, I've, I've written and performed some songs. Like one of them was for um, someone who was running for the Senate. 
And I wrote a song for him and performed it at his fundraiser. <laughs> and I've written a few songs. So I wrote a pandemic song, which is on my YouTube channel. And it's about being locked inside. When I first got to Hawaii, I had a 14 day quarantine to stay in my room. So I wrote a song about the quarantine and uh, <laughs> that was kind of fun. And there's another one about the quarantine as well, but yeah, so you right up my alley, lady. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to look up that pandemic song on YouTube later. I would love to hear that. And I'm sure many of my audience would love to hear that. Um, yeah, I'll find the link for you. So um, we can keep talking about music all day long. But unfortunately, we're at the end of this wonderful, wonderful episode. Um, do you have any social links, any song links, if you want? <laughs> to share with my audience before we wrap up here? Yeah, well, I think the message that I would like to give to everybody is no matter what the problem is that you're, you're wrestling with or the thing that makes you feel stuck or you're depressed or you have fears, whatever it is, just know that hypnotherapy would often be the easiest and fastest way to get past that. And as students in school, for you to understand how your brain works with, you know, memorization and stress and all the things that are happening to learn about hypnotherapy and use it on yourself to make your studying better and recall better and uh, get rid of test anxiety and all that. So that's the main thing is, you know, you might find someone at your school that is learning hypnotherapy and they can help you out as well. Or you can learn self-hypnosis or listen to a recorded session to improve what's going on. Cause you just, you don't have to struggle like you're struggling. You can really let go of a lot of your fears and your holdbacks and your being stuck. Anyway, that's what I think is really important. Awesome. Um, if any of my audience wanted to get in contact with you, how would they do that? Uh, my website is at wendy.com and you just have to spell it with an I. So W E N D I.com. And then there's contacts there. So you can get in touch with me. Um, and ask me anything. Just send me email and ask me anything. I will reply to you and help you. Awesome. Wendy, do you mind repeating that that literally that last part? Because my computer decided to go cuckoo while you were <laughs> explaining that. Um, the, yeah. Yes. The way you can get a hold of me is at wendy.com, W-E-N-D-I.com. And there is a contact form there. You can get in touch with me and send me an email. Ask me questions. I will reply and help you. And I have a lot of free stuff that will help you as well. So just wendy.com with an I, not a Y. <laughs> and I'll help you. I love to help. I love to help people, especially students. I am all about making sure that you're having the best possible time in the work that you're doing in school. Awesome. Thank you again for joining me, Wendy. This was a wonderful, wonderful conversation. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I look forward to it. <laughs> you know what I mean. Right. I know what you mean. <laughs> I look forward to when it comes on, when it goes live and everybody. <laughs> yes, which I'll go into detail in a few short moments. To all my listeners, thank you for listening to the latest episode of the Words of Heart podcast. Again, I am your host, Deanne Sanchez. Thank you again for joining me, Wendy Friesen. And if you enjoy this episode, if you like this episode, if you want to be a guest on it at any point and partake in that sing song game I come up with feel free to <laughs> let me know and listen to this episode in the following ways we are on Facebook at the words of heart podcast we're also on YouTube under the same name and of course you can tune in on Spotify Apple Google wherever you listen to your podcast if you have figured out a way to listen to it on the moon let me know because I still find that to be a possibility intergalactic broadcasting either way I hope you enjoy this episode and if you want to share your own thoughts or stresses or struggles feel free to contact Wendy or myself on Instagram at heartword25 or on Twitter at heartword24 however you choose to do so please don't hesitate there are a million of resources to help you because at the end of the day no one should have to go through anything alone. So once again, stay healthy, stay safe, and until next time. Bye!